Hello everyone, I'm Silent Death, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Space Engineers, episode 19. Today, we're going to be looking at a new mining solution. We have, over there in front of us, our previous mining craft, Death, the Death's Atmospheric Miner. Our dam, which works reasonably well for things that we only need a couple hundred K of, like cobalt and things of that nature. It's good for that kind of stuff. However, for things that we need millions of, it is a bit lacking in capacity. So we need something more. Something better. What we need, in fact, is a big ass miner. Our BAM. And this is a strip mining truck with the nice kind of normal orange, I guess, construction orange color that you would expect out of a heavy industrial vehicle. It's got a cool little sloped back thing going on there. I started out trying to make something that looked very boxy and very industrial, but I decided that I didn't like that shape, so we ended up going with this. Come around here on the dark side. You can see in here, you have some of these dusty tubes and a little bit of mood lighting. Giving it kind of a big giant engine block feel. Two big headlights on the front. And another headlight underneath so that you can see the stuff you're going to be running over. The front wheels are lowered one block here. So that you can raise the front up higher to go up and down ramps. With a couple of big giant wheels in the back. Also protected. Front wheels are, of course, heavily protected from trees and stuff. We have a whole bunch of these twin drills here. They have the same drilling area as the vanilla drills. However, they're one block shorter. So, you have a much less chance of accidentally breaking your drills with these. We also have these nice little slope connectors, or conveyors, slope conveyors. To help out with the little look here. In the back, you can see we got a big, giant atmospheric engine. To help move you when you have a large amount of ore. The drills are connected to three separate pistons. Mostly that's to help keep them from snapping off as easily. Though that is of course always a risk with pistons. Another way you can do that if you're maybe playing multiplayer and pistons just aren't an option for you is to make this a merge block section and use some unmergeable tubes, unmergeable conveyor tubes and just merge this down here on the bottom. That would also work. Let's make it a little bit dark here. In the back here we have some nice little mood lighting. A little catwalk here. So you can kind of come down from the top using these little stairs here. And look out at your drills or drilling. See how the wonderful orb, orb being sucked up. Some more stairs under here. Come down here, take a little closer look, and maybe repair the pistons when they fall apart or whatever. Couple of programming blocks here so you can easily access them. Two oxygen generators. Mostly there to produce hydrogen. There you also have some oxygen tanks there if you need to produce oxygen that way. Since we're using an atmospheric thruster, 
it's not really good for airless places, but if you replace the thruster, you can use it on a moon or something. In the center here, we have a shield generator, not a very expensive one, lit up from the top. And if you don't want to use a shield generator or you just don't have the platinum, this is not supporting anything so you can just remove this and it won't affect anything. If we go forward, we have some more mood lighting here. Two small reactors. The ore detector up there also being lit up by those little green lights. And then all of our gyroscopes here in the front. Behind this glass with some more mood lighting on the top and bottom there. If we turn on our light, you can see we have this tube up here. Runs from the connector that's on the bottom. Connects up the tubes from our drills outputs them into many 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 cargo containers total of eight batteries if you don't want to run off uranium you can just use that though you probably still want to use the reactor just to keep these charged it does use a fair amount of power when it's running at full burst full whatever full tilt we're using the conveyor not the platform conveyors, that's what I was looking for. So that they kind of blend, blend seamlessly in with the armor here. Can't see the conveyor tubes from the top here. Down here, here we have the connector. Nice and flush, so you don't have to worry about breaking that off. Just drive right in through there. Unfortunately, there's no cameras in here because I felt they would just get ripped off. Wasn't really a good spot to put them either. Now let's head up to this room up here. We're using these dusty air vents. Three pairs of those on each side and then you have the tubes kind of fastened to the wall here and this is the air intake for all the oxygen another couple of programming blocks with some timers on top of those again for easy access then we have three buttons here one for the drills one for the pistons and one for both We have two entrances to the bridge here, or the driver's room. A little bit of mood lighting coming up from the bottom there. And this should fill up pretty soon, 89%. these on. There we go. So that rapidly fills. We have a reader uh, readout right here that tells you the oxygen level in this room. A warning sign here that tells you that this is an unpressurized area through this door here. A number of displays. Our shield strength. Our battery power. Cargo percent, oxygen tank percent. Then we have how much ore we have, our power overlay, and again, the oxygen in this room here. Some corner lights here highlighting the seat. Using another one of these Asimus industry open cockpit things. So you get a nice good view from the chair here. Though you still probably want to drive this out in third person mode because it is rather large. 
Now let's turn on the sunlight and we will see this thing in action. On the hot bar here, you can see we have first button is the handbrake. You can, of course, use P to activate the handbrake. This is mostly just to let you know whether it's on or not. I always forget whether I had the handbrake on or not. And end up trying to drive around with the handbrake on. It's just not a good idea. Two is programming block, which we'll come back to in a moment. Three is a timer that activates the drills and the drill piston. Toggle that on. You can see the drills are kicking on. The handbrake is not very strong. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Drills are digging down in there. Next to the timer, we have an on-off switch for the main thruster there. And of course, in the last slot, we have the connector. So we can lock and unlock that. Now already you can see pistons are having problems. That one always seems to break. I don't know why. Just that one right there. Even if I go back and fix it, it will be broken the next time I use this. Now, what we do is we turn on this programming block. And it has a little interesting script that just maintains a speed. That's all that script does. If you're going too slow, it will kick on the thruster there. Uses a PID controller if you know what those are. If you don't, you can look at my Kerbal Space Program videos. I go into detail there. This is the cruise control programming block. We have our desired speed in meters per second if you want to convert to kilometers per hour divide by a 3.6 and the other thing you may want to change is this block here or this variable here which is how frequently the programming runs or the program runs so every n ticks there are 60 ticks in a um, simulation a second so this runs for every simulation second. A simulation second is one second in game if you're running at 1.0 simulation speed. And you can see with that little programming block running, it keeps us rolling along, automatically mining out the strip here. We stop. Turn off the programming block. So all we have to do is stop that. Though if it's still overridden, we may need to turn off that too. See if this is, yeah, see that's still overridden. Might want to add that to the hot bar if you want to. Now that we can raise our drills. Apparently we're going to try to roll backwards. We do need to have the automatic cargo thing, automatic cargo script set up so that it pulls all the ore from the drills into our cargo containers. And you can see just with that little bit we've already mined 4.3 million ice. That is a lot. Just in that few little seconds. And also we have a tiny bit of a ramp here, though it's not shallow enough for us to drive up and down it. If we add something more, we could probably do that. Maybe we have a different vehicle we want to drive up and down. I have a little ramp there. You do need to build a ramp for this to go up and down using some of the pretty long ramps. It's not the right thing. So something like these five or six long ramps for this to go up and down. It does have the front wheel thing like I said, so it can help get up and down steep ramps, but you do have to worry about the drills snapping off. Unless you go the merch block route, then you don't have to worry about that as much. Now what the plan is, or how you should use this, is you mine out a bit of an area, a few strips here, 
Then you build yourself a ramp down. You go down and you mine out some more. So you get kind of a classic strip mine where you mine layer after layer after layer until you get to the nice ore that's down below. Or you gather as much ice as you want. For mining ice, you know, it's pretty quick. You can just mine a strip straight across the whole lake and you'll have millions and millions of ice. But for iron and other ores that are down below, you're going to have to mine a few strips down. And that is how I plan to use it in my survival world. Building it is going to be a little bit difficult going from the blueprint. These tires are going to be a little bit in the way and of course you always have to manually build the tires. Then there's the piston part yourself. You need to build the tubey part and connect that up before you add on the drills. Or they have a tendency to snap off when you're merging those two together. But it is possible, it's a bit of a pain, all pistons are a pain, but it is possible. We'll take a little bit more of a look like this. Yeah, just one final look at this. I really like the way the shape of this turned out. It looks very, I don't know, modern looking. Very sleek and very flowy. Assuming that's a word. Not the very industrial look that a lot of drill platforms are going for. It is still rather functional. You may want to make a few tweaks to this, but I think what you have here is something that can do a lot of heavy work for you. Our nice little frameless windows up there. But yeah, you can find this on the workshop under BAM for Big Ass Miner. And there should be a link in the description if I've uploaded it already. Hopefully I have. And if there isn't a link, I'll add it. Remind me and I'll add it. But that's, that is going to be it for this episode. Next episode, we will be back in our survival world. I'll probably try building this off camera and go ahead and get some mining done between episodes. Like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.